so preposterous, so ridiculous, that it defies description. Just to ban a particular firearm, such as a semi-automatic, to think that it's an assault weapon is ludicrous. It is a big myth. You gotta pull the trigger every time. It can't be a rapid fire gun. Maybe we should look at renaming it and don't call it a semi-auto. I pity our poor peace officers who are out there trying to enforce this law. President Obama indicated during the campaign we would like to reinstitute the ban on the sale of assault weapons. I think that will have a positive impact uh, in, in Mexico. I'll you pick the time and the place, no question about that. Whatever the number is, our gun stores, our gun policies are helping to fuel the violence in Mexico. You heard it. Anti-gunners from one end of Pennsylvania Avenue to the other, blaming your firearm freedoms for arming Mexico's rival drug cartels in the bloody turf war they're waging. I think it's a red herring, really. I, I really think it's a generated excuse to, to drive home their own personal agenda. Any excuse they can find, they use. You know, any excuse at all. An agenda that includes using California's assault weapons ban as the working model to bring back a federal ban. It didn't work the first time. Why do they think it would make any difference the second time? The ban itself did nothing to take criminals and or guns off the street, nothing. But still, it's a ban Secretary of State Hillary Clinton insists was effective and successful. The 10 years we had an assault weapons ban in America was one of the tools that helped to drive down the crime rate. But how easy Hillary forgets, that's the same deception and distortion her husband used when he was in the White House. The time has come for those of you to say that the only way for Congress to make their seats safe is to make the rest of America safer. In the end, even former President Clinton's own anti-gun justice department declared the ban had no impact on crime or criminals. And Clinton was forced to admit his gun ban was a political debacle for him and 20 members of Congress who lost their jobs in 1994 because they abandoned your rights. I don't think it's a secret to anybody in this room that several members of the last Congress who voted for that aren't here tonight because they voted for it. If the anti-gun majority in the Congress is planning to create a federal law modeled on California's law, they got to be out of their minds. California was probably the perfect model of what not to do as far as a firearms ban. Oh, I think it was an absolute failure. They want to make criminals out of everybody. They knew very well that they were going to affect sportsmen of people who are interested in firearms. They wanted to. They are simply anti-firearm. One stroke of the pen, they, they made uh, uh, people that really are not criminals uh, cast them as criminals. Unfortunately, law-abiding gun owners are the ones who are paying the price for all this. People like Matt Corwin wrongfully accused and wrongfully held in jail for 23 days on more than $500,000 bond. I was booked in the LA County Jail on, on 12 felony charges, uh, including distribution of machine guns, uh, possession of assault weapons, uh, you name it. They charged me. They tried to say I wasn't even in the military. But he was. Matt served in the Army as a member of the military police. I worked directly providing security for the President of the United States as well as a number of other uh, dignitaries and high-ranking service members. Matt was also president of the Associated Student Union at East Los Angeles College, but his whole world was turned upside down in May of 2007 when Matt says his school newspaper alerted police about some pictures he had posted on MySpace. I had pictures of my personal collection of firearms, me with them, my friends with them, uh, pictures of myself in uniform. So what happens? I was leaving my house. My vehicle was surrounded by multiple deputies, uh, heavily armed with uh, full body armor. They pulled me out of my vehicle at gunpoint, grabbed me, put me on the ground. What's going on? They went through every inch of my house. They also brought out the ATF. This has become sort of the M.O. They show up at a house in the early morning hours with a search warrant and act as if the person inside is ready to have a shootout with them. They treat them like terrorists. I was being put on the television. Uh, I had deputies uh, giving press conferences, and it was in the L.A. Times on the front page of the California edition saying that I had stolen military weapons in my house. Um, all these things that were, of course, completely untrue, but you know, making me look like a criminal. 
There's 20 years worth of horror stories. Good people get it getting prosecuted and accused of being bad people because of bad laws that they can't understand, that police can't understand, that prosecutors can't understand, that the courts can't understand. My weapons were absolutely legal under California and federal law, but for sure the arresting officers just had no idea what was going on and they just saw a gun and they said, that looks, that looks scary, that must be illegal. That can't be legal. There is no consensus among prosecutors with regard to what is or isn't a prohibited assault weapon. I, I myself have sent one or two letters asking about a specific firearm with specific characteristics. Is this illegal? And they won't give us an answer. Even the need to call or talk to somebody from at DOJ really underscores uh, how fragile and com overly complex these laws are. It is very confusing, and you ought to be on this side of the counter trying to explain it to the customer on the other side of the counter. There's times I've called the Department of Justice and asked a question. They told me to hang up and read the book. In all honesty and in all objectivity, we can't figure out who's guilty and who isn't guilty under this law. It is too complex, it is too vague, and it's virtually unenforceable. Just how complicated? We went to JW Guns to find out about a ban that's been rewritten three times and expanded to include not just make and model, but characteristics often called the evil parts. Now, this is a 30 round magazine with a pistol grip. This is an assault weapon in the state of California. You cannot have this. But if you go like this, apply the Monster Man grip, that makes it legal. You're eliminating one of the evil parts. Makes sense to you? Makes absolutely zero sense to me. This is how ridiculous it is. None of this, this, this has any effect on this. It all has to do with these cosmetic features that make no difference in the way the gun actually functions or the way it can be misused by a criminal. Quite often, looking at these cases, we find out, um, sorry, this is not an assault weapon. Um, we're going to have to give it back, and we can't file these charges. In the end, that's what happened to Matt Corwin, but only after he spent more than $50,000 in legal fees to prove his innocence. The DA eventually was able to recognize this is a person who just doesn't deserve these charges, and they dismissed everything, you know, but it could have easily gone the other way. If I was convicted, I was looking at as much as 94 years in prison. But to make matters worse, Matt had to pay $1,000 to get his firearms back, all for a mistake made by law enforcement that will haunt him for the rest of his life. Even though all the charges were dismissed, there's still that record on file. And, and so, yeah, it basically follows me around. Uh, I was in law enforcement before. That, that career is um, probably close to me, at least for about 10 years. So the legacy of the California assault weapon law is 20 years of injustice and accidental felons, not any kind of reduction in violent crime. The fact they're trying to bring it back, yeah, I think they're trying to continue to erode and eat away at the rights of the law abiding citizens. I think we should all be concerned about any time freedoms of any type are being sacrificed. I'm scared to death. I think we're losing our freedom. I don't think it'll last another generation. There's no place to go but down if you start letting people usurp your freedom. I think our forefathers would be rolling in their grave if they saw what was happening. If this administration is allowed to run with their anti-gun stance and the American people allow it to happen, America will never be the same.